the boundaries of cyber security. We are about to start our section, the boundaries of cyber security, if there are any, and the aspect is quite relevant. Information security flows uh, coming as part of the cyber uh, aspect of cyber attacks and cyber security in the media. We are supposed to discuss what really is happening in the area of cyber security and cyber attacks and how to counteract them, how to combat them. I'd like to represent our panel to you. We have, we're having today expert specialists that will share um, with their experiences their uh, actions and activities taken over these eight years when Russia has been under the war, when the war was unleashed, Vladimir Uvarov, the Bank of Russia, the Department of Information Security, since Lev Kuznetsov, deputy president of the uh, I mean, management of Spausberg Bank, Dmitry Garov, a chairperson of the security department of Tinkov Bank, Sergei Rusanov, member of the management of the Akutia Bank, Alexander Tarnovsky, general director of the insurance home place car company. Now we're going to talk with the speakers about hybrid cyber security. First, I'd like to represent myself, to introduce myself. My name is Igor Liponov. I'm in charge of the information security in the power of Telecom company. And together with this, I am responsible not only for security in the Ross Telecom structure, company and for the major part of the state information resources including your state of slugi are under my supervision and a lot has been connected with the center of reacting response to uh, cyber attacks electro energy security uh, sites and other sites of interest and over the last eight years we've seen a lot colossal growth of cyber attacks, cyber attacks as a massive DDoS attacks and targeted attacks, targeted at and penetrating into any, the information systems over to take control of them and to leak personal data. It's become over the last eight months a reality. The reality we live in and in connection and in rather than this real cyber attacks will see a big number of fakes and fake and leaks uh, and cyber attacks and if we take the beginning of March, March the 3rd of this year when that uh, uh, cyber war uh, peaked and that grouping made an ultimatum and also an ultimatum that they promised on March the 7th to withdraw all the money funds from all, all Russian citizens from all the bank accounts. That was quite an ambitious announcement. And in addition to those cyber attacks, there were some information influences. Luckily, all this is taking place uh, is fakes. But let's talk together our, with our specialists and our panel experts about how things look like in reality before we start talking about cyber risk and cyber security, I'd like to carry on with the questions discussed at the plenary session, questions, issues connect with import substitution, the so-called technological independence and technological sovereignty. And the first question I'd like to give to you, Vladimir Alexandrovich, will tell us see, about the approaches in the directions, areas of import substitutions are implemented in the financial sector. What are particular characteristics? And because we are interested very much in what has already been implemented in, in our uh, in terms of our Russian technologies, the colleagues, thank you for the question. The aspect of import substitution in 2022 was one of the most relevant ones, given to the decree of our president by president of uh, issued in March of this year. We understood that we would have to live in under new conditions if earlier despite the fact that many our uh, credit uh, lending organizations have been using some foreign solutions today, right now, at the level of the state, if there is a wish, they can do, uh, they can have a, an opportunity to, to develop their own software products and their hardware as a 
prospect. The issues of import substitution have covered all our companies, all our entities in our state. And as part of the implementation of this idea, we in the Central Park, in the Central Bank, set up a center for coordination of economic sovereignty. This became part of the Department of Information Security of the Russian Bank, Bank of Russia, beginning from July. They started their functioning. Together with this, we have set up a, a committee of finances that involves major, major uh, credit and lending organizations, uh, insurance companies. Currently, the main task of the Industrial Committee is to coordinate the efforts in the industry uh, on necessity to understand uh, the relevance and importance of software products that uh, will have to be used in the credit and financial and financing security sector. Talking about applied software products, uh, uh, there, there are some problems. In, uh, in addition to this, we have some problems with the software products and and all the representatives of the financing sector are waiting for the state to determine the main targets of the software in order to set up work for the work in terms of developing applied software products from my point of view this is one of the main problems but I think it's a matter of time that will enable in the near future to determine our main areas of activities and determine our next steps of where to work towards. There are three, 33 industrial committees, as you know. Our industrial committee is one of them. We have become part of the entire infrastructure in of coordination with the Ministry for Industri Industries and, and Trade. Our main task is to formulate industrial plans and our industrial plans of a transfer of from the industry from foreign solutions to the Russian solutions. We're planning to end this, complete this by the end of this year, and together with the possibilities and opportunities of the solutions available on the market, we have discussed that with our uh, industrial committee members and the colleagues agreed to provide their own infrastructures to carry on testing and of those solutions that have currently been developed in those financing organizations and companies. From our point of view, this approach will enable to formulate more sensitive understanding in the industry, across the industry, so that all small companies and minor organizations could could uh, be more certain in terms of providing uh, financial services to our citizens. Thank you, Vladimir Sandovich. Let's carry on and talk about cyber attacks. I'd like to ask you a question. This Sberbank company is his biggest bank, and it's obvious that it's one of the biggest targets. How? How, what landscape do you see regarding the current threats? Thank you, and I have prepared three or four slides to show the scale of cyber attacks we have sustained so far, all of us together. And the main uh, conclusion is that this cyber attack, as part of the cyber war unleashed against Russia, we have sustained them. And as part of the analysis, we have been making the banking industry has sustained the cyber attack much better than the other industries. And this has been connected with the fact that over the last years, lots of uh, financing organizations, lending organizations have invested lots of time and effort into creating, developing uh, the infrastructure that is necessary into the rules, methods to be successful in combating any cyber attacks. This is one of the main conclusions we can arrive at. If the banking industry, banking was or could have sagged under the burden of those cyber attacks, some kind of 
Some kind of irreparable uh, thing could have happened. It becomes very difficult. As a rule, everyone unites, and we in the banking sector we have have been able to unite ourselves at the right time to very jointly interact in detail very closely as part of this healthy and sound collaboration under the umbrella of this Central Bank of Russia. And we uh, rechanged our work in order to cater for the, uh, for the risks, cyber risks, which has enabled us to be successfully uh, com combating cyber, the cyber attacks. This is uh, uh, the second, the two conclusions I have managed to make the banking sector has survived somehow and if, uh, if we have had problems in the sector in our sector yes of course they have they have someone who was not ready f to face a new the new situation and this quite complex situation that started in february february 24th highlighted our strong points sides and weak sides uh, and which opens new opportunities to become stronger Talking about the slides, the focus on the, in all those cyber attacks against Sberbank and banking sector. First of all, Sberbank. I'm going to be based a uh, build on the data uh, covering our lending organization. It was about a DDoS attack. It's a new area, new direction we, we discovered so far. A huge number, tremendous number of attacks we have sustained. This is how it looked like. This is the figure of not less than uh, 470 cyber attacks that we have sustained over the last seven years. We can, you can compare March. The March was especially difficult. The most difficult. We registered not less than uh, 200 DDoS attacks on our bank in March. And there was a period of time when once we registered, recorded 50 simultaneous DDoS attacks against our resources. The attacks began more complicated. They began started to, new, to use new methods before attacks are unleashed. They do what is called a deep re reconnaissance intelligence. We are getting scanning all our ports, and including open ports. The infrastructure for the cyber attacks is prepared beforehand by villains, by uh, our rivals, by enemies, and the infrastructure is used that has never been highlighted or, or by our radars, which creates new difficulties to combat those cyber attacks. And I can say that in, on the whole, in general, the banks basically have sustained this burden and not to say uh, I can't say the same about some other organizations these figures show that the number of companies to some extent were not able to provide their services because of those cyber attacks they suffered and they were unable to be protected 100% against those cyber attacks. So the second thing is the phishing. Phishing turned into a major separate direction of cyber attacks or area of cyber attacks. It was connected with some uh, stealing of personal data as personal data were published, had been published by the AT, uh, the army of the Ukraine and everything that was known about our citizens is just the, about 180, 190 million pieces in number of citizens. It's about 55 or 60 million people to some extent. Their data have been published over the, in the last resources, including those gray resources. They've been posted, that information has been posted. Uh, the number of these phishing websites and domains, this is, that is what's important. We, today, on average, or weekly, we are blocking, spotting and blocking and revealing not less than uh, 1,100 domains orienting on this beer company, this beer bank company. We have to keep uh, the special special department that is monitoring the sites, websites, domains, and we define them as a, we 
uh, spot them as clone and we send them to blocking. The second, this is the second area I can but say a few words about and what is important is our common aspect telephone swindlery. Here this slide shows the development evolution of the situation. We registered, rec recorded almost 100% complete stoppage in March. The second area, I can't but say a few words about, and what is important is our common joint aspect, telephone fraud and freaking. This slide shows the how the situation has been evolving. I have already told that we re recorded almost 100% stoppage of 100% of, of uh, telephone fraud, and then we saw a gradual rise. You can see on the graph here what has changed. From the point of scenarios, nothing has changed. But from the point of focuses made, of course, it has changed. First of all, its most relevant one scenario is a secure account, a help in investigation, the special area that it has acute mobilization or partial mobilization, and uh, loans issued. And what is important is over the last time, telephone fraud has been focusing on messenger messengers, the phenomenon that we'd never encountered before, and this growth has been growing uh, by more than 2.7 points higher, times higher in different years. We have determined the record as sums of funds stolen. It's, this figure has become $150 million of st uh, stolen in many uh, lending organizations that belong to the first top ones. One client has lost $150 million uh, at one phone call. And I'd like also to say that what is to be done, what we have to do, the main instrument here is, is not only our infrastructure, infrastructural readiness or our desire of opportunities to combat a cyber criminals in an important area we did have determined as a priority one is awareness a raising cyber awareness of all those individuals and legal entities in, that, in our country a short time ago we launched a new resource i can show it to you. it's called kibrari with a QR code, it's kind of a library of knowledge about cybersecurity. There's a number of sections that can provide several uh, special information about cybersecurity. We believe that this resource can be demanded by by or by everyone, by all the industries. We are open to all our colleagues and we are inviting them to post their information, their presentations with references to their work, to their products. It's very important we can, that we can uh, take our uh, law enforcement bodies' attention to the uh, facts. There's a special section here, investigation, right after the session. We're going to post to publish a new investigation uh, regarding uh, connect with telephone fraud and freaking with all the proofs uh, that prove that from the territory of Ukraine that telephone fraud has been perpetrated not only against Russia but against uh, and some other countries to uh, in, an, uh, in, a, in the special number of calls and with specific facts we have recorded together with our colleagues from telecom company very interesting information connected with the number of telephone calls. <clears throat> At the previous slide showed uh, 49,000 calls plus the information that is recorded about the talks, uh, telephone talks. And now one of our clients told about that he asked to block uh, the telephone, some telephone number. We determined we traced by using special instruments of intellect, uh, artificial intellect instruments, uh, they would determine the number of telephone calls of telephone fraudsters to our, given to our uh, citizens. This number is about 1.5 billion, and about 5 million of our Russian citizens can be, can receive telephone calls from fraudsters, from 
when we uh, compared our res results of our research with the number of calls of call centers and we obtained a figure if, for example, the, uh, one average call center processes one but 5,000 calls per day, it, it amounts to about 950 or 60,000 call centers that are working against Russia currently, which coincides with the assessment, our assessment, assessment of our partners and colleagues and the call centers that are working against Russia. This is the main thing I wanted to share with. I can't buy, but no, mention very complicated aspects that is called forecast. I'd like to devote some forecast, some forecast assessments that are looming inside. We see quite a big amount of losses we suffer uh, as a result of the globally. This figure can be uh, of funds lost about is about seven billion dollars. It's talking about Russia. We have a necessity to collaborate with each other, getting accounting the damage suffered so far in reality. And these are the assessments that when stealth uh, was perpetrated from a personal accounts or some other assessments when money was stolen and we see money stolen by legal entities on the side of legal entities we from the point of methodology we are not calculating yet well, it's not our that we are calculating, but there are no uh, measure as uh, principles how to calculate that. And I prefer to cast about this year this figure that this figure may amount from the point of proof proof uh, to be more than 165 million rubles as losses incurred. And answering the last question, if we can win telephone fraud, we are deeply convinced that we can. We, can, we are convinced that this is absolutely possible and the investigation case I mentioned which is going to be published after this session for the first time we're going to show the telecom companies that together with the law enforcement bodies in the format of control purchasing we call through these telephone companies and we see that these telecoms uh, let this traffic go, illegal traffic goes, and this material let this traffic go in violation of the available, uh, available laws, and we will hand this information over to the law enforcement bodies, to the Roskomnadzor agency, and to the prosecutor's office to take tough measures in order to have all the telecom companies fulfill the laws, applicable laws, and uh, follow the rules. Thank you. Uh, uh, talking about the ob observations we've made so far in the first week after the special military operation began, when we were attacked with a huge number of DDoS attacks, we observed in the, a very interesting picture in the dark net, where uh, stock exchanges uh, uh, selling resources for DDoS attacks by 4 o'clock p.m. We saw the uh, all accessible resources for DDoS attacks uh, ha had depleted. They were buying everything, resources, all the resources available in the world in perpetrating attacks against Russian information resources. That was an unprecedented pressure on Russia. You, I haven't told the figure, but the, in terms of figures, it's more than one, uh, 550,000 active participants are involved in these attacks, but more than a million people all over the world in to some extent have been using these instruments to implement perpetrate cyber attacks against Russia and these attacks against Russia invo have in involved the IT of the Ukrainian army and according to our estimations is about 200,000 computers provided by the sympathizing citizens to, uh, to perpetrate attacks against Russia and some professional hacking groups have been involved and unfortunately these cyber 
activities against Russia uh, involve, have involved also some intelligence services of some foreign countries. At a press conference of the U.S. Cyber Command Post confirmed that they had been uh, involved in cyber attacks against Russia. I'd like to give a question to you, Vladim. Tinkoff is a completely digital bank, and cyber security for you is one of the key business functions. How uh, have these eight months passed? How, what attacks have you seen? How have you managed to combat them and fight back? I would agree with Stanislav Konstantinovich, and I would add by the part that is that concerns the security of the bank itself. And the idea is that the main key in, uh, thing in, in information security is to understand who the enemy is and what instruments he is using, what methods he is trying to achieve the ends. It's very correct that the changes we have seen at the, a very big number of sympathizers, non-qualified people all over the world that are ready to provide their equipment and be uh, involved personally in uh, different types of cyber attacks. We see that in cyber intelligence, we see the instruments they're using, and this creates a big, a tremendous pressure and a background for the DDoS attacks. That the number of these attacks has become has grown several times as much. And of course, it, it involved some other hacker hacking groups. And if we see that the banking sector is more protected than the other segments of business on the whole, who have, suffers is the third side, the, uh, the providers of those banks that have an access to the in banking infrastructure. We are talking about supply chain attacks when breakage or attempts of attacks against organizations is perpetrated through the weak third parties, for example, those who provide their services to the banks. And this trend has been seen, is can be seen on the market with more protected organizations feel much better on the whole. And in the oh, your department has combated this and the rest of the market. There are bank pro, uh, service providers for the banks I might have combated in much worse way. And the trend, this is the trend where the trend comes from. We see new attacks, old attacks and new, renewed attacks through the updating that carry some hazardous code that they can, uh, they're tr uh, trying to give it to organization and those open source, open source code, for example that was supported earlier by the community can carry some kind of agitation, propaganda information, or some additional burden that can influence the organizations located on the Russian territory. And what is amazing is that this trend can be traced not only in Russia, but all over the world. I have seen that report uh, which indicates that the attacks through uh, updating are, uh, belong to the top all over the world. If in Russia, it uh, so it, it is exposed to attacks through third parties. There's another trend of which we have we have never talked, and there are some cases unknown to me that c uh, have caused some sequence consequences. But the banks should take uh, to pay attention to some insiders that because they have some insider people uh, uh, specialists that can share some confidential information. I saw some announcements in the dark net uh, about a price for providing information. For example, people are, you know, people suggest propose a relocation, a shelter, political asylum, and people, there's, there are some people who can yield to this and the control over this critical infrastructure inside banks should be enhanced, should be enforced and enhanced and control over the behavior of the user should be also enhanced. And it seems, so, given all this into account, it seems that if we talk about development, the foreign providers of software products are leaving, are quitting, and the update is performed in a much worse way. For the banks, it's not less. It's much less risky because there's they have operate centers that have collect indicators of compromising uh, compromising their collection. So-called dread intelligence on the market, across the market, and the sea, less 
protection of which less affects the banks, but it affects the companies much greater extent that are unable to support to provide such elements of protection as a due diligence, security, and so on. And the state is supporting that. And uh, state, in terms of this, the state is uh, uh, to follow the security by design approach when when the means funds are not protecting efficiently, but the security should go to more towards the products uh, less design risky. When uh, one component is cracked, it would, might cause a cracking of all the hacking of all the compo other components. Zero trust principle, the second one, I believe. It's an old, those are no old principles of information security, but they can be looked at and at new from a new angle. And including those providers can be applied to those providers. So open source code that can be uploaded should be checked in a new way. And especially critical approach should be exercised towards those officials, employees inside of those companies that uh, have some trust to something hazardous. These trends are going to be supported, and this uh, is supported by the state, and it's getting closer to the businesses. And this is a very good direction, very good way. And the third important trend of which which has already occurred, and I'd like to support that, and I'd like to uh, create, uh, discuss this uh, kind of a community to be set up uh, regarding security, because the foreign companies are leaving, they less, they keep less contacts with the Russian Federation. But, and I, what I'd like to see is a strong community set up in the Russian Federation. We have all the necessary specialists in cyber security. They will have some very strong experts in this. There's a community of information security specialists chaotically forming, so to say, and this community, this trend should be supported properly. Thank you. And uh, characteristics about uh, these eight months is about serious changing in the landscape and principles of working of those villains and criminals. If we had to deal with criminalization of that shadow area, gray area, those cr criminals were working for monetization. What we saw beginning from early March has been a big number of instruments to perpetrate those attacks and uh, lots of bases of leaking accounts that were posted in the open access with the comments from the Ukrainian side, come on, take it, use it. And every leak now is published at the moment, in the moment, uh, this information is sent to the public access and we see a trend that many target attacks have their own, have the targets, uh, aims of obtaining lists of employees with their positions, with their accounts, contact data, and these lists of employees uh, get published for further, and I'd like to support Michi for further use of this information for to perpetrate, to exercise uh, in, uh, pressure and attracting insider specialists. I'd like to ask you, Vladimir, a question. Mitri has said a lot about when we talk about the experts about the cyber security, we hear them say about the stronger necessary of necessity of stronger coordination of the activities of a cyber security teams in different organizations. And in this or that way, this industrial-based concentrated coordination is highly demanded now. The banks of Russia, FinCET, was the first uh, industrial coordination center in Russia. What are the prospects of de development do you see in Russia? What additional efforts in terms of coordination uh, are you taking in this? in this sector, in this business. It's very, I'm very grateful to you for this question, very important issue. First of all, I'd like to comment, uh, to comment uh, to my two previous speakers. What the Central Bank has seen uh, the period beginning from February 24th, stronger tax, several tax uh, uh, against the financial sector. The financial sector became one, the most important sector that had combated, withstood this 
uh, blow of the attackers and we observed in March the number of attacks, cyber attacks was tw 20 times as high compared to the April of the previous year. In May it was 80. Computer attacks against the, the number of these computer attacks against the industry speaks for itself. If we analyze the results of the third quarter, say about, about the computer attacks connected with the DDoS in refusals of servicing is number uh, compared to the last one is twice as much and about 25 but by 25 percent uh, has been perpetrated with the use with the use of hazardous software and I and some colleagues have told about that but I, I can confirm that credit and financing sector health was stood all the tax which was contributed into by the people first of all by specialists of, of teams information security teams uh, department security department representatives lending organizations financing organizations that are the focus of uh, attention on and uh, I'm my, I'm special my special gratitude is for those people who have done their job precisely this is a result of a daily routine work that can enable financial sphere uh, to withstand those attacks perpetrated against the financial sphere another important thing from the point of the vectors it's clear that quite seriously uh, quite serious protection is supported by our non-credit, non-lending organizations. But the very important thing has been raised here, the t aspect of software products and attacks against those lending organizations through third persons. This is a vulnerability, cracking and hacking against those organizations that are involved in developing software products. And one of the efforts our attention has been, uh, our specialist uh, attention uh, was concentrated is monitoring of incidents connected with the cracking of all those products, software product developers. We try to individually work out every case with each organization that can, could have been vulnerable from the point of those sophisticated software products they have provided in their solutions. So we're getting those solutions aimed at enha to enhance a security and with the count of all the events ha that have happened we have managed to get together all of us to arrange information exchange with all our information community i'd like to mention to that the number of this information exchange is more than 1000 participants and uh, the interest in exchanging information today is something to reckon with and this demand in obtaining actual data real data uh, is available and this our center it, it has succeeded in completing that task I'd like to give a question to you literally how are the terrorists say Como assesses this situation the situation is as follows the answer is quite complicated on the one hand no major incidents have been recorded in the state over the last eight months on the whole we can talk about uh, but the, we, we managed to fight back but those were connected that is connected with the individual competence of specialists and our IT uh, specialists who have managed to block and re reconstruct the infrastructure ruined but damaged it's not a result of systemic work and we as the state the industry are facing a task uh, from this of of class tripling uh, to, to turn uh, to go into a teamwork it's uh, st about stronger regulations but stronger responsibility of operators for personal data this is stronger coordination because the coordination now between the biggest security centers is going on in the telegraph telegram chat it's not the way it should be done and this coordinating role coordinating role and it's about in common instruments in the industries in cyber security it, this is all taken together is likely to make us stronger as been discussions have been underway at the level of main regulators and I think it will it is likely to give a positive provide a positive solution to our industry uh, let's carry on Sergey 
You are a security specialist. You are in head of digital development uh, department in one of the biggest banks of Russia, and you are much closer to the businesses than we are experts in cybersecurity. These eight months, how have they looked like uh, to the businesses, to the IT? Thank you for the question. I am not. I have not been involved in information security service. Uh, it's been uh, monitored by the uh, high, uh, CEOs of the bank. But the key moment that makes us successful, successfully work, is this collaboration as a demand of cooperation out the inter interbanking community. It's internal collaboration. Bank at Kritia has always been an open example of a team uh, device. We have very low interdepartmental barrier, so to say, inside of the organization, where, where any task is resolved uh, through a team play. Talking about the collaboration between the IT and security services, and the IT specialists are the people who can who have competence in this, a very good competence, especially those who have been involved in some major areas in our security, information security specialists have uh, very, very well oriented in the capabilities of their, service, their services in their departments. We are not black or white, we are a mutually in, in, impregnable services. We give very good relations, personal relations. All the problems that occur, everything is resolved by some informal command or team process. This is the where the main key to success is for all these events, activities. Talking about this, our bank, we're not that big as the Sberbank, we're much smaller, but the problems that have been exacerbated over the last eight months, beginning from February, they have dealt a tremendous blow to us, and we st still can't understand why we hit that list, our bank. But we did hit that list of potential enemies in one of the uh, we are one of those spirits that can should be attacked, according to them, and these attacks are carry personified personified character. Even we receive messages in our way going to attack you, protect yourselves. This is what messages we received so far. Some attacks, with two factors have been very especially pernicious. The traffic of attacks is much more powerful in our uh, IT complex, our IT set, we see that professionally, as professionals, we mitigated them and we we uh, keep in cooperation with the telecom colleagues that uh, have been writing very good help to us. Even in, in this situation, we uh, it was very hard to combat this paras parasitic traffic that imitated the client's requests and simulated the client's a request and the rules that should be should have been used in sitting through filtering those requests. It's, very, it's been very difficult, very complicated in adapting to the changes in time. But there have been we have some days when we refused to serve in services, denied services, and the clients were learning their lessons in businesses. The clients are, don't care about how, why they don't receive that service, this or that service. And they, uh, some data, but why some data are lost, some parasitic messages are, are received for the operations never perpetrated, never performed uh, together with the businesses and our IT security department is we make a perfect beast in resolving these problems. Yes, we can say that this is your blunder, this is my blunder, you, you are guilty, you are to blame. There's a very good, interesting uh, character and one famous face. We are doing the same, the same, same business. And there's a lot of uh, areas in the IT sector that come together with the info business in, and the security tools that, uh, are very much integrated in all, all the technologies, all the services, and all the products. And it's very hard to divide between this and yours and mine. And this is how it is done in the most, most fruitful way, uh, which is characteristic of our bank. I'd like 
to have this experience taken up by other organizations that confirm once again that this collaboration and unification uh, are necessary because we are all encountering challenges with the same problems and uh, to resolve them uh, on your own is not is not per productive. My question to you as uh, an IT boss, we uh, security specialists uh, tend to the opinion that this digitalization, digitalization sometimes we call it um, harness di digitalization that has been uh, kept up over these years uh, when upon these eight months past are there any any kind of restricting factors in your approach as a as a manager having received that a uh, number of attacks. Uh, do you reconsider uh, your attempt, your approach to digitalization, this row of uh, avalanche of attacks that have been recorded, with, uh, has been aimed at uh, uh, denial of servicing. We didn't, haven't had any cases of stealing money, money stolen. This is the denial, not denial, it's a uh, uh, a worse access to the services, and our department has been trying to solve that a secu a security issue. No, no, it's not all about security; it's about access, accessibility, and cyber sustainability. We have had a situation of access, accessibility, and at the same time, uh, import the issue of import substitution. One in pr prospect will have risks. We can encounter risks of uh, efficiency of our components getting weaker and this sense I would like to consider this issue of security in a broader way together with and I would do that problem together with the efforts of central of the central bank Alexander a question to you when we talk about risk cyber risks what comes to my mind is the ensuring an insurance of cyber risks. You, as president of a major insurance company, what do you think? Uh, how much is insurance of cyber risks is available and is demanded now? Thank you for the question. Yes, as you have said correctly, with the as digitalization grows, cyber threats are getting more and more are getting stronger and more frequent and more complicated and this tendency of the last five or even ten years we as an insurance company uh, we're working with major data and we are uh, watching our own uh, uh, statistics available and we are keeping our own statistics on the international market and Russian market I'd like here to say to give some interesting figures here in addition to what Stanislav Konstantinovich has said in this respect regarding the statistics of this Bird Bank. In preparing for this report, this presentation, my, some of my colleagues have prepared some interesting information. According to the Kaspersky Laboratory data, the targeted attacks in 2021 were uh, aimed at 35% of the Russian organization. It was 2021, and uh, the number of those uh, highly available incidents involved illegal use of the insiders of the IT resources and use of the corporate equipment and for undermining and sales of confidential information. On the whole, the damage uh, from the employees' illegal activities has become, has turned into, a, 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 it has amounted 30,000, 30 million rubles. For uh, small businesses, this amounted to 2 million rubles. If we talk about DOS attacks, this is a very substantial problem that concerns the market, has been of concern for market for many years, and talking about the year 2021, you know, IT business, it, the average DDoS attack cost 28 million rubles on average. If we talk about the current year, the ongoing year, statistics has already been collected. Uh, the number of uh, such attacks has become uh, higher, much higher, and the industries on the whole, across the industries, uh, this grow growth has been 15 times as, as big. It was the financial sector, 32 percent from the entire number of attacks were attacks against the banks and insurance companies, against the pension funds. Next target was in terms of frequency of those attacks. Uh, 
the state was the state sector. More than 18 percent of those attacks were aimed at against the state sector. 14 percent against retail, but 10 percent about log against logistics, logistical companies. If we talk about the insurance company, only about 8 percent of all the attacks have been perpetrated against the insurance sector. And uh, some difficulties have been connected with that. We have run auditing. We have the, the large number of security department specialists. On the whole, we can say that with some first, we uh, we fought back, we fought against, and we fought back against the first serious attack. But we don't have any illusions. We should carry on. On the whole, the hackers have more instruments for attacks to perpetrate their attacks than we uh, do when protecting against them and the hackers uh, are in a position of more win a winning position we because we have to work in the broad field and close the biggest number of vulnerabilities and of course we are trying to improve our methods and techniques and the resources the entire world the, uh, has provided to the Ukrainian hackers to perpetrate attacks against Russia. It's kind of unprecedented. I am delighted with the work done by the financial sector because working in an insurance company is quite dignified because we have sustained the first serious blow. Talking about the question, if we talk about how how to build the model of insurance. I have several risks and new conditions. I believe that we should be based on, on a major uh, important areas, HR. Uh, then the uh, second one is auditing the risks. And the uh, third one is assessment of consequences of these risks. Currently, on the whole, what we see have seen is the, a lack of specialists in the IT over the last time we have seen some kind of outflow some specialists have quit because uh, the all these sectors have been suffering this including the financial sector talking about those specialists that would combine a uh, knowledge of classical underwriting knowledge in the financial uh, security in, in the sales of s selling such products such uh, unique specialists are lacking and what is necessary here is to develop, from my point of view, to develop, educate their own, our own personnel, and educate our uh, uh, special, our own specialists. And what is important here, collaboration of all specialists in the financial sector. And what is required here is support by the central bank spent on education uh, of such specialists. If we talk about the auditing of cyber risks, undoubtedly this audit has been done and a number of industries have put forward a number of requirements towards the towards performing this, that kind of audits. If we talk about financial sector, we have uh, certain documents that regulate performing this kind of audit by the central bank. And these rules should be, are going to be reconsidered in terms of stronger control, because this is where the financial sector uh, is vulnerable because they have a lot of data. Such work should be done in other uh, industries. And talking about other dist uh, industries that have already been uh, exposed to cyber attacks in retail and the sphere connected with logistics, you know, state, st s state sector enterprises different that provide different kinds of information services. Talking about private companies, private businesses, there are two major problems connected with uh, 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 lacking competence. Uh, it, it can be said about small and middle mid, mid businesses. They are unable to audit the, uh, the to make those audits on their own. Especially small little co small companies, uh, they uh, think that they can cannot be uh, cannot withstand a cyber attacks. I think this is a delusion. We have quite competent specialists that can provide the assistance. Talking about cyber, cyber risks, it's clear that in res reassessing in risk protection, risk protection, we involve specialized companies, but we have our, our own methodology in terms of implementation. If we talk about the main triggers, we analyze this a software, certain software, quality of the software products and services available, 
and especially is available responsible for security and their uh, correlation with the total number of employees. IT specialists, the amount of funds earmarked to protect against cyber attacks, and we assess a certain maturity connected with that security. And there's a we will form a special. Uh, comprehensive proposal in term, proposals in terms of protection, talking about the consequences of risks. Today, we have a legal basis, certain legal basis, from my point of view, as a consequence of these risks that have been triggered for the market players uh, 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 in terms of uh, punishment, for example. The fines, the punishments, penalties might be about, might run. Uh, to 60, uh, 70 thousand rubles, which is almost nothing. And the same can be said about other companies. And uh, perhaps this is where, if we talk about the drivers, we can talk about two areas. The first area is, is stimulate, stimulating capabilities. We can consider the issue of implementing some kind of legal perks or uh, tax perks or sub subsidies and all those companies that are taking their cybersecurity seriously. And this it can be said about some uh, tax perks, for example, uh, when ta taxing the profit. This might be a very good stimulating technique that would uh, enable to pay attention to the security protection. Talking about punishment and penalties, we can reconsider the amount of penalties. It should be made more substantial. A discussion has been taking place regarding the amount of such, such penalties. We should take this seriously. We, if, if there are any other possible uh, ways of payments, we should, and accounts, accountability. And in terms of the proposals, we see that currently what we lack is uh, the common uh, terminology of defining the cyber incidents. Uh, there's a lack of court procedure practice, procedural practice, operational procedure practice in order to work with all that, uh, focusing on some, uh, using some unified methodologies. In terms of assessing the risks, it should be unified so that it should be uh, it could be more understandable and more clear to the clients this is a lot of issues this actually causes a lot of issue a lot of issues in order to enhance trust to the insurance products talking about insurance products we are developing them in addition to the insurance protection uh, formed by the organization on its own for major clients. This is a, a, a pol is insurance policy for small clients. It's a complex product that in provides uh, a technological protection together with the financial protection. We have developed quite an interesting product that enables to establish a, a software product by uh, Spersky Laboratory. And on the other hand, it enables to use the services of 24% centers that uh, has been monitoring the perimeter and uh, uh, tracing attacks and that involves specialists physical special that pr provide that protection in the manual mode and this if this double contour is damaged this is when the financial protection comes in from my point of view this is this uh, comprehensive solution is universal for the small and mid businesses middle businesses with the cost at initially oscillating about uh, up to 200,000 rubles and uh, if we talk about the protection of three beginning from 3 million to up to 50 million rubles to be protected these solutions are quite comprehensive and quite clear understandable that would enable to minimize those risks and to enhance protection of all the economic sectors and uh, talking about these instruments, this is what we're really lacking. Quite, these are quite clear instruments. We started our panel with the regulatory bodies and their the representative. I'd like to finish up this panel with the regulatory representative. Last question to you, Vladimir Alexandrovich, to protect the interests in the cyber security sector. To 
uh, resolve the issues of import substitution and deficit of personnel, what is considered often is the services of outsourcing services and models of outsourcing for the IT uh, companies and for uh, uh, security, cyber security departments. Has it always been difficult? It's always been difficult. How are things now? I know that the Bank of Russia is planning a certain changes to be implemented in this sphere. Yes, you're absolutely correct. If we talk about the solutions of major banks, it's clear that they, they have everything with the infrastructure, with the teams, with solutions and all that we are talking about here, about banks, small banks, about the possibilities of using some outsourcing solutions and this aspect of outsourcing solution and regulation of working with mid, middle and small companies. This comes to the fore, this particular aspect comes to the fore. Of course, we're paying very big attention to this with this legal initiative prepared by the team of specialists, including the Central Bank of Russia. We're talking about outsourcing that would enable to use the, the infrastructure infrastructural solutions of the IT companies that will enable to including to use the cloud services and we know the concerns of the uh, financing uh, spheres representatives that we should regulate this particular business we're working on this initiative and should become a draw a bill and perhaps in the autumn in the fall at the fall session of the Duma it might be considered and might be passed which would enable to regulate the issues of outsourcing and find solutions for small organizations to carry on their active business activities. Thank you so much. We are about to finish up our panel. I'd like to uh, express my gratitude to all the speakers. Those have been very bright presentations. Let, let us thank them. I'd like to thank you. you. Uh, our audience. It's been very interesting, uh, and I hope it's been interesting for all of you. Thank you. We are done.